Rory Schultz, General Manager, Corporate Planning and Marketing from UD Trucks. A very warm welcome to the Red Zone. It is good to talk to you. Uh, it's an interesting brand story. It goes all the way back to before the Second World War. Without giving us a chapter and verse, it's an interesting story, isn't it? Yes, very much. It, uh, it was started by uh, a Japanese entrepreneur, uh, Kenzo Adachi. Uh, and he produced, uh, first of all, some diesel engines and then later mm -hmm. decided to produce a truck for the Japanese market. Uh, that was many years ago and I think uh, they've evolved into a very modern truck manufacturer mm -hmm. today. That Nissan heritage that has run through the brand's history, how important has that been? It's been very important um, and it, it's perhaps not oh. the Nissan heritage itself, it's perhaps more the Japanese heritage mm. or the Japanese way of mm. doing things. And there's so a different approach to business and to marketing, isn't of there? Of course, there's mm. a different approach to business and to marketing as well as, of course, exceptional craftsmanship and engineering, uh, which has mm. uh, allowed us to... to form a strong foundation to provide very good product over the years. Fast forward and uh, now part of a bigger stable which includes the big uh, Volvo brand. That's correct, we're mm. part of the Volvo AB group now and uh, we form part of one of the, the brands which operate uh, and compete in the markets uh, independently. Mm. Uh, so the UD mm. Trucks brand has its place then in the Volvo mm. AB. Group. Right, let's talk a little bit about marketing approach. You say that uh, UD Trucks has always adopted an evolutionary rather than a revolutionary approach towards dealing with customers. In this day and age, though, many people would say perhaps revolutionary is more important than evolutionary. You disagree with me, though? Yes, I do. Um, we've basically said that, you know, for the South African mm. market or even for the African market, which is a developing market, one has the dichotomy of South Africa, which is, is partially developed, but also is in a phase of, mm. of, of being developed. Uh, and that is why we've rather taken an evolutionary approach. And the main reason for that is, is to be able to support the product. We don't want to bring the latest technologies, uh, the latest equipment that cannot be supported. We need to upskill people first before we can bring those technologies. And that's what we mean mm. by an evolutionary approach rather than a revolutionary Do you approach. have a very different mindset when you're buying a truck as opposed to a car? Very much yeah. so. I think... Uh, the, the purchasing of a truck is the mm. purchase of a business tool. Uh, yes, of course, there is some emotions in it mm. uh, and, and some, some uh, uh, brand loyalty. In I mean, terms brand, of brand, brand heritage, brand brand heritage, heritage is important. It is yeah. important in mm. it, but very much it's around uh, buying that business tool. And of course, the most important thing to look for in that is, is what is it going to cost you to operate that vehicle over the life of that vehicle. Mm. So professional partnership is critical not always difficult or not always easy to do. It's, it can be very difficult at times. It's most mm. certainly difficult. I think there's a lot of product parity in the world today, so it becomes more about the relationships. Uh, you know, if someone is, is buying some capital goods from you uh, worth a million rand at a time, I think there needs to be a level mm. of trust. They need to understand mm. that that product will be supported uh, during its, its economical life. And those with, it's, it's those partnerships that are important, that the trust can be built up where the customer can say, uh, I, I'll, I'll do business with you. Understand that, but not always difficult to, to maintain. It's, it's very difficult. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we are dealing with mechanical things. They do mm. tend to break down. So I think the most important thing is, is our reaction to when things mm. go wrong. It, and, and that is also mm. what reinforces mm. uh, the relationship. I think if you communicate very well with, with customers and you, you explain mm. the situation or if you don't have a solution, let them know mm. uh, what you're going to do in the interim. That's the, that's the, the important. As, as someone who watches branding and marketing, I'm always a little cynical about this thing called the strap line or the payoff line because it's critical that a brand lives that payoff line. It's all very well coming up with one and slapping it on the end of your brand communications. You have to live it. You're changing from the road to your success to going the extra mile. Explain the thinking behind that. Uh, Jeremy, the thinking behind that was um, we, we develop a new product and we, we've changed a little bit our mindset around mm -hmm. that product. We, the, the product has three key issues in it that we're trying to look at. We're trying to look for a modern, smart solution for our customers. But on top of that, we want to excel on the essentials. Um, and thirdly, we're looking at, at a thing called the Gemba spirit, which, mm -hmm. is, which is the frontline spirit. In other words, that, that coal face interaction. 
But in saying um, that the new product must excel on the essentials, we're looking at especially something around uh, you know, fuel consumption, mm. uptime of the vehicles uh, to provide that reliability. Uh, the reason why we've changed that is, is we believe that with the new product that we bring in and, and tests that we've done is that we have improved the fuel consumption on that, which fuel is one of the biggest input costs for the transport operator. And it's based on, on, on saying because you're using less fuel, you can perhaps go the extra mile. And it also mm. then relates to our people in terms of the support and the service, mm. the uptime, uh, the introduction of new new. Uh, telematics programs which are there to support a lot of the your a lot of your competitors will have all of that because I would suggest to you much of that is hygiene factor in terms of product and product parity these days it's this thing called what do you say the ge it's the, the gemba, gemba spirit, spirit yes. obviously a Japanese <coughs> notion it's the it's 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 being in front of the customer and making sure that the experience is unique That's again from a marketing perspective how do you inculcate that type of culture. That, yeah, that is something yeah. that we've had to do over yeah. the years. And I think, um, you know, if, if, we, if we look back at the history of UD Trucks and its dealerships uh, within the country, we've always had um, uh, a dealer network that we've trained and that we've, we've tried to teach uh, this Gemba spirit. It's something that, that the Japanese also taught us and brought with us saying, uh, you know, you need to fix things right mm. the first time, you need to communicate, which they're very good mm. at. And it's these small little things that we've done over the years at the coalface where the success mm. has come that from. That constant adherence to quality is absolutely critical, not just for a brand like yours, but I guess for all brands. I think today, mm. uh, Jeremy, because the product mm. from a technical point of view is very much the same, it's mm. going to ultimately be about the people and mm. people's attitude. And, and if we can get the attitude to the correct Gemba type of spirit, mm. then I think uh, it, it works very well. Marketing is all about relationships. Rory Schultz from UD Trucks, thank you very much for the insight. I do appreciate it. Thank you very it. much, Jeremy. Thank you for the opportunity.